हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज़ फिफ्टीन ऑफ जुलाई एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइज इन द टुडेज वीडियो विल डिस्कस द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज़ पेपर विल टेक ऑल द आर्टिकल्स विद द बैकग्राउंड एज वेल एज द वे फॉरवर्ड नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गाइज लेट सी द ओवर व्यू ऑफ न्यूज़ पेपर सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट विच आर्टिकल्स आर एक्चुअली इंपॉर्टेंट इन द टुडेज न्यूज़ पेपर सो हेयर वी कैन सी ओके एंड वन मोर थिंग यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल Link for Telegram is given in description box in YouTube. Now uh, here we have two important articles. One is India France set to co-develop jet engines. So Prime Minister of India has visited the France. So important takeaways out of that we'll take here. Then India's third lunar odyssey. So Chandrayaan three has been launched. So some details regarding to Chandrayaan three we will also take. Yamuna flood reaches Rajghat. Uh, so this is a flooding in Delhi. Not much important to go there. Uh, water recedes a bit. So again, guys, this is uh, as the city section. So the regional issue, water logging issue, etc. Advertisements they have been given. Okay, <clears throat> moving on, guys. In this particular direction, we largely again have these advertisements, tenders, etc. We come to the editorial page. On the editorial page, we have deciphering Maharashtra's defection, its politics. So basically, guys, recently we have seen that in the NCP, the Ajit Pawar faction, had, there is a uh, split in the NCP that has happened. Okay, so the article is largely talking on that particular line. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that the NCP division, Shiv Sena division, how it is helping the BJP. Okay, or is BJP having any? Uh, how is what capacity they are playing the role? these are the highly politicized and political things not very much important for the examination because in exam the political defections of the political parties etc are not important the academic things are something which are actually asked fine <clears throat> then a virtual summit virtual silence will take this particular article uh, problematic eu parliament resolution misdiagnoses the manipur issue so basically guys recently what has happened the uh, european union parliament has uh, advised india to solve the problem of manipur that is going on but understand uh, but again guys the issue that comes in this particular direction is that uh, we uh, this happens to be the internal matter of india uh, bombs and ballot boxes <coughs> okay so basically the panchayat elections uh, panchayat poll local poll violence in west bengal fine and all that particular thing is being given up now see it is a ground zero article where they go on the ground and give you the story of the people from the ground the ground conditions that are prevailing largely guys the article doesn't contains much of a substance here again for the examination then guys moving on so today we don't have today we don't have the uh, text and the context page where two pages are there which contains uh, some relevant and very good articles for upsc because today is saturday so on saturday text and context doesn't comes then <clears throat> further moving on uh, sc notice to maharashtra speaker will take this particular article then guys these political uh, commentaries etc no need to go again there is a chandrayaan article i will take it with the uh, article on the first page then guys here we have article at g20 meet india presses for responsible use of ai technologies we'll take this particular article then after that guys supreme court declines to hear uh, appeal in jagan's wife case fine no need to go too much in detail in this article guys because these happens to be the political issues not important for the exam point of view data protection bill poses a severe severe restriction to rti act we'll take this particular article then further moving on guys in a jbe against china blinken rallies asian countries against coercion so basically guys uh, see this particular thing that as rush uh, as the china us is concerned as china us is concerned there is a kind of a confrontations going on between the usa and china they try to talk but again and again what happened there are certain uh, problems that come so now what has happened <coughs> the uh, mr blinken the us secretary of state is meeting the foreign ministers from the asean countries okay and uh, basically in a kind of a you can say a light tone or a kind of a satirical tone he has passed certain comments against the china okay and their claims into the south south china sea again are you required to follow this particular article guys no because every statement by uh, such leaders fine particularly which doesn't concern india are not that much important putin says prigozhin refused to cede command of wagner group so wagner group was a private military group 
okay private military that was helping the russia in russia ukraine war but three weeks back they turned against russia only okay so after that this mutiny the wagner group was asked that their soldiers their arms ammunition should be given to russia but that has not happened okay then our good goods exports then we have this particular article <clears throat> Goods exports slide 22% to 8 month low. Okay, so basically guys, uh, uh, right now we see this particular thing that the exports have got impacted. Now, 22% uh, has, uh, it, it, has uh, it has receded since the last 8 months. What are the reasons for this particular thing guys? The reasons are, are some, something like this. First of all, there is the growth slowdown going on in the entire world. Why growth slowdown is going on? Because during the COVID 2020, the fiscal packages were given by the countries, but they have increased the inflation. So now as inflation has become problematic, the interest rates are going up in all, most all the countries. Because of that, the growth has impacted. And as the growth has impacted, the export sector fine will be impacted. So that particular thing we are seeing. Then after that, guys, also <clears throat> there is a concern that Russia-Ukraine war is going on. Then post-COVID recessionary trends are still continuing. Okay, geopolitical tensions such as the tension between China, um, China, US, all these issues combined have uh, diluted the growth prospects. Because of that, Indian export sector is also getting impacted. Now see, here are a lot of data that on which month, how much was the export, how much percentage it has declined and all such kind of a things, they have been given. Now you are not required to track every data month by month quarter by quarter data for the examination okay so that is all about this <clears throat> now moving on guys in this particular direction uh, we have then the sports page and uh, again the science page also has not published today which is published from monday to friday so that page is also not there so let's discuss all the relevant articles now one by one in detail so usually guys on Saturdays, the, the newspaper stays a little bit light. Why? Because on one page editorial, there is that ground zero report, which is usually not important. Text and context is not published and the science page is also not published. And text and context and science are the two pages which contains the majority of the important articles for the uh, Hindu, actually three pages. Now, today, uh, every class we start with a quotation. Today, we'll take the quote from the coffee and naan. Kofi Annan says that education is quite simply peace building by another name. It is the most effective form of defense pending there is. So education, if you educate the people, you broaden their horizons, then they can learn to think beyond the stereotypes, prejudices, radicalization, fundamentalism, all these particular things will go down simply by giving education to people. And as all these particular things, <coughs> as all these particular things will happen, how that particular thing will help? It will bring peace. Okay. So education can be the most cost effective. Education can be the most meaningful intervention for bringing the peace. So that is all guys about this particular article. Fine. This is all about that. And now we will be moving to the next uh, first article for the today. Now, so there are these two articles that have come. Success of Chandrayaan launch vehicle gives Gaganyaan a leg up. India's third lunar odyssey commences with perfect launch. We'll see this particular article with respect to GS paper number 3, Science and Technology, as well as with respect to the prelims examination also. Some uh, details are there which can be important. Okay, now <clears throat> see this particular thing guys, that first of all telling you certain things. Now this is, this is the third flight to the moon, third lunar flight, okay. Now, when we talk about the Chandrayaan 1, Chandrayaan 1 was successful in identifying the traces of the water on the moon. Chandrayaan 2 was launched in 2019. But in Chandrayaan 2, there was some problem. Now, understand this particular thing. The Vikram, Vikram, Vikram was the lander. Vikram was the lander in the Chandrayaan 2. Okay. So, what will happen? Now, suppose this thing, this is let's say moon. Now, uh, uh, this is moon and let's say this is the propulsion module. It will eject the uh, probe on the, uh, on the moon's surface. Fine, there will be a lander. That lander was Vikram. 
okay so the lander will land it will make a soft landing and then it will eject a rover okay it will eject a rover which will travel which will roam across the moon and will collect the sample so vikram was the lander and pragyan vikram was the lander and the pragyan was the rover pragyan was the rover okay now what happened in chandrayaan 2 that was launched in 2019 Vikram, the lander, was not able to make the soft landing, okay. The landing was hard because of that the Pragyan, that is the rover, was not able to deploy properly. And because it was not able to deploy, it was not able to collect the samples from the moon. So therefore, Chandrayaan 2 was not quite a success. And as what Chandrayaan 2 was not able to do, now that particular thing we are replicating by Chandrayaan 3. Okay, so Chandrayaan 3 will aim to repeat what Chandrayaan, uh, Chandrayaan 3 will aim to do what Chandrayaan 2 was not able to do. Now, see this particular thing guys that as of now, as of now, as of now we see this particular thing that the rocket, okay, or the, uh, the, the launch vehicle, it has lifted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. Now, it will take some time. Okay, so basically the landing over the moon will be on August 23 or 24. So August 23, 24 is the estimated time when the landing on moon will happen. Okay, between this is the journey time. Now actually guys, the more important details will come when the landing will happen. We'll see that what are the important takeaways, what are the important discoveries that have been done. But till then also there are some other important information that you need to know about this particular development. Now first of all guys, first of all guys this flight also happens to be very much important because guys in this particular flight launch vehicle mark okay LVM uh, the vehicle that has been used to launch okay that we are also going to use into the uh, Gaganyaan mission. Now what is Gaganyaan mission? So basically guys, uh, the ISRO is attempting to send the humans in the space and as the humans will be sent into the space, so this Gaganyan mission, Gaganyan mission is also going to use the same engine, it is also going to use the same rocket. So if this particular rocket has performed, if this particular <coughs> rocket has performed, then we can say this particular thing okay, that uh, uh, basically it also is testifying that the next Gaganyan will be also be the successful one. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> uh, basically guys, in this particular uh, uh, launch, certain things I want to show you here. Certain things I want to show you here. <coughs> okay. So, basically this is the entire launch vehicle. Okay. So, in total there are three things that are there. There is the propulsion module. There is the propulsion module. Then there is the lander that is Vikram and then there is the rover that is Pragyan. Fine. So these are the main three things that are there. Now guys here you see S200 solid rocket boosters. Okay. Both of them. Now they are carrying largely the solid state fuel. Okay. So first they will be used. Then they both will be detached. After then L110 liquid stage fuel will be used. Then the cryogenic stage fuel will be used and then finally this is the only component, this is the only module which has all the payload. Okay and from this payload the Vikram and the uh, Vikram that is the lander and the rover will be deployed on the moon and the rover will finally collect all the samples. Rover will all, all be collecting the samples. Okay now as we talk about, as we talk about uh, this particular mission Guys, understand this particular thing, the life of this particular mission on the moon will be one lunar day. It will be the one lunar day. Now, one lunar day, when we talk about the one lunar day, it is equal to 14 earth days. One lunar day is equal to 14 earth days. So, it will be spending one lunar day time or equivalent to 14 earth day time on the moon. will collect the samples and those samples will be, uh, those samples... <coughs> Uh, uh, metrics will be relayed back to the India. So basically guys you see this particular thing that how the Chandrayaan 3 will be launched. So as Chandrayaan 2 uh, was launched for example what will happen. So basically there will be there will be the uh, uh, multiple times okay the orbits that will be made around the earth and then 
a kind of in a slingshot way in a slingshot way the flight will be made to the moon it will enter the gravity of the moon okay and then at a particular uh, then uh, around 100 km the landing of the vikram will be made okay so this is all the things that are going to happen so as of now the lift off has been successful and after the lift off there is this journey of nearly 40 days that is there after that the deployment of vikram as well as the <coughs> pragyan is there and then we will see that what important things it is able to achieve okay so that is all guys about it i hope that you have understood it now one more dimension i want to uh, take up here is that guys many of the important psus even the private organizations have contributed in the <coughs> chandrayaan 3 launch and here we see that how now isro is collaborate collaborating more and more with the other parties okay in its space mission space explorations earlier also the msmes they have contributed or to the isro a lot now mishra dhatu nigam limited mishra dhatu nigam limited it is a defense psu and it has developed a very uh, various critical and strategic materials for this particular rocket it has supplied the cobalt base alloys nickel base alloys titanium alloys okay and some special type of steel for the liquid engines all these things have been provided then the kerala government's keltron okay it has provided some uh, some help okay kerala minerals and metals okay it was also providing certain components then the organization such as the ananth technologies coltas industries the private industries also have supplied some of the critical components to this chandrayaan 3 and the most importantly is the central tool room and training center odisha bhubneshwar it is supplying the critical component critical components such as the links of the wheel mechanism of the lander okay because last time we see that the lander and the rover lander and the rover there was certain issues that okay so this is guys all about it i hope that you have understood it now more details will actually we be able to get on august 23 24th post the landing that will happen that is all guys about it and uh, uh, now we will be moving to the next uh, next we will be moving to the next <clears throat> article okay india france set to co develop jet engines india france set to co develop jet engines we'll see this particular article with respect to the gs paper number 2 international relation india france relations india france relations now moving on and guys let's take the article as what it is talking about so basically guys first of all what has happened the prime minister of india is visiting france and in this meeting there are a lot of defense deals there are a lot of crucial deals that are going to come for example what has happened india and france both of these two countries have largely finalized the collaboration of three things number 1 they have talked about they have talked about the defense cooperation and in this defense cooperation the india and france will have joined have signed a memorandum of understanding combinedly they will be developing the combat aircraft engine combat aircraft engine for the indian combat aircrafts secondly <clears throat> indian multi role helicopter indian multi role helicopter will also be co developed by the safran of uh, france which is a defense organization of the france and drdo okay of india so safran and drdo has signed the agreement for development of indian multi role helicopter and the combat aircraft engine and this indian multi role helicopter will actually be designed and developed by the hindustan aeronautical limited which is a defense pseu okay now uh, after this after this second thing that both the nations have agreed is op uh, operation of small and advanced reactors okay small and advanced reactors also they will be operating earlier also the france have provided a lot of support in the reactors okay nuclear technologies then they will also be developing the joint earth observation satellites okay the india uh, the isro has a rich his uh, isro has developed quite extensively the eos satellites so on that front also they will be cooperating so on three things the cooperation has come 
नंबर वन इज ऑन द रिएक्टर नंबर वन इज ऑन टू द डिफेंस फ्रंट नंबर टू इज ऑन टू द रिएक्टर्स एंड नंबर थ्री इज ऑन टू द अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन सेटेलाइट नाउ मूविंग ऑन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन गाइज फर्दर द रोड मैप विल ऑल्सो बी डेवलप्ड नाउ वन थिंग गाइज आई वॉन्ट टू जस्ट कनेक्ट हेयर विच यू शुड बी नोइंग If you remember, just uh, uh, just uh, some days back, around uh, 20, 25 days back, the Prime Minister of India made visit to USA also, and there also there was this particular agreement that was signed with the General Electric, General Electric, and the agreement was to manufacture F414 engines. Now these engines are also for the aircrafts. So if we are buying the aircraft, or if we are procuring the aircraft from america by their general electric then why again this agreement has been signed you understand this thing that these f414 engine will be for light combat <coughs> aircrafts they will be for the light combat aircrafts but apart from the light combat aircrafts we also need we also need the medium combat aircrafts okay so these are for the light and this agreement that we are signing from with the france it will be for the medium combat aircraft okay that is something that we are going to do so both of them will play a separate role now guys when we talk about the india and france india and france have been the defense partner from a long time for example with the help of the france we have developed the scorpion class submarines six scorpion class submarines have already been developed earlier we have procured the rafale jets from the france so france has been the trusted partner for india and france has also provided the technology transfer to india now taking forward these particular new agreements have been signed and meanwhile guys there as the prime minister is visiting france some more developments have happened in the background what development have happened so defense acquisition council defense acquisition council has given the approval for procurement of 26 rafale m fighter jets we will be procuring three more we will be procuring three more scorpion class submarines six we already procured fine and three will more be procured so in total nine submarines will be procured and in this particular direction the memorandum of understanding has also been signed between the mesgau dockyard limited which will actually be manufacturing developing the submarines in india as well as the naval group of france okay so this is something that is going on and then guys also on another fronts so basically between the garden reach ship builders and engineers limited which is an indian psu okay it has again signed one more agreement with the naval group of france to develop the surface ships for surface ships we have also developed this particular uh, <coughs> this particular mou has been signed so guys here we find here we find that on multiple fronts the india france defense relation is getting deep it it is deepening moreover guys as you will be writing your uh, uh, exams let's say is gs paper number 2 india france relations you are referring you can put these particular points it will increase the authenticity of the answers then <clears throat> next guys moving on in this particular direction so what has happened both the countries have also decided that a technical office of the drdo will be opened up in paris at the indian embassy so these are all these particular uh, uh, all these are the uh, developments that have happened in this particular direction guys as <clears throat> any visit happens any meet happens okay so we take all the key takeaways in very lucid fluid format we have taken it when us visit happened we have taken it when the egypt visit happened we are now taking it as the france meet is happening so please uh, <coughs> please uh, uh, download the synoptic notes and make a crisp summary out of all these particular things fine that is all about this okay now moving to the next article now moving to the <coughs> next article data protection bill poses severe restrictions on rt act ncpri cautions government ncpri cautions government okay now uh, see this particular thing that uh, what has happened recently the cabinet recently the cabinet has cleared the uh, recently cabinet has cleared the digital personal data protection bill let me zoom so recently the cabinet has cleared the digital personal data protection bill 
and this bill has been brought into the parliament okay and by the way if you are following the newspaper analysis regularly we have also discussed the key provisions of this particular bill also earlier but this article is not talking about the key provisions it is talking about that how the data protection bill might be impacting the rti right to information act now so therefore we will see this particular article with respect to the gs paper number 2 issues related to transparency issues related to the transparency now what has happened here so basically guys basically guys as the digital personal data protection bill has been passed it aims to protect the personal information it cannot be shared but at the same time <coughs> but at the same time <coughs> but at the same time so fine it will be protect it will protecting the uh, personal information of the people it cannot be shared why it cannot be shared because already into the putta swami judgment supreme court has provided that the right to privacy is a fundamental right under article 21 and therefore the right to privacy has to be protected so therefore we are now coming out with this digital personal data protection bill but on another hand right to information act talks about providing the information so somewhere they will both be coming in conflict now what has happened the government has proposed one amendment to the rti act of 2005 and where the amendment is proposed by the government government is providing that the section 8 sub clause 1 sub clause j of the rti act would be amended fine now what will they what will happen by amending this particular section by amending this particular section the government will put a condition that government is not going to share the personal information is not going to share any personal information of any government officer any government functionary even if it is going to serve the public interest even if it is going to serve the public interest we will not share any personal information about a government functionary civil servant or any such kind of a thing why because as per digital personal data protection bill we want to protect the personal private information okay now guys understand this particular thing that problem that is coming in this particular direction is that even the supreme court <clears throat> even the supreme court multiple number of a times have provided this particular thing supreme court multiple number of times have provided this particular thing that if any information serves the public good or public purpose then that information has to be given even the restricted information has to be given even the information which is not not which is confidential even that information has to be given supreme court has ruled this particular thing in the yashwant sena case but now they are specifically saying that even if there is a public purpose we we are not going to give any private information now it has been said that by this particular amendment the spirit of the rta act would be would be impacted because government tomorrow <clears throat> there might be the possibility that there is a some kind of a cover up or some kind of a issue that is going on government using this provision will not give any information so many of the <clears throat> organization such as the ncpri they are saying that such kind of amendment should not be brought as of now guys what will happen what will not happen that is too early because right now just the draft has been cleared then that draft will be <clears throat> come will be coming in the parliament in parliament there will be the discussion that is going on in discussion the amendments will be proposed and finally later words will see that what has actually come so right now it is too early to actually conclude that what is happening here okay then the next is at g20 meet india presses for responsible use of artificial intelligence technology so basically guys <coughs> for uh, the year 2023 india will be leading india will be the chairing the g20 presidency now as per this g20 there are a lot of meets that are going to happen on many different different themes now guys what has happened the g20 they have taken up the conference on crime and security in the age of nft non fungible tokens artificial intelligence and metaverse okay this was the conference that has been held and in this particular conference there india has proposed that the artificial intelligence that is now emerging okay <clears throat> this uh, uh, ai uh, that is that that is emerging 
it might lead to many problems it might lead to many troubles for example ai generated cyber attacks could be there which can be made on government entities which, which can be made on the private servers okay there is the malware find highly convincing information manipulation today with the artificial intelligence deep fakes can be generated today with the artificial intelligence the deep fakes can be generated now these deep fakes are the synthetic media you can entirely make a video of a person saying certain things doing certain activities which actually that person has never done okay so there are these deep fakes which is a kind of a highly convincing manipulation then there are the scams that can be deployed by using the ai so it is needed that we are we first of all analyze the capabilities of ai the negative capabilities of ai and then we should also come out with the law we should also come out with the legislation or a regulatory framework how to regulate that ai this is the most important thing in the present hour so this is something that india has proposed and india at multiple times has proposed the regulation of ai <clears throat> okay uh, however some concrete law some concrete framework or some rules have not come out of that india have just proposed to <coughs> regulate the ai fine <clears throat> so this is guys about this particular article then we have the next article virtual summit virtual silence now this particular article guys we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 2 international organization international groupings and india's role in the international groupings so basically <clears throat> so basically guys what is this article all about so recently recently what has happened uh, you might be already knowing that 2023 india is chairing the shanghai cooperation organization sco shanghai cooperation organization also 2023 india is chairing the g20 g20 india is a chairman at both sco as well as the g20 now basically guys what happened recently the sco meet was conducted but in the virtual format now see when we talk about the shanghai cooperation organization as of right now there are the nine countries in the sco okay there are the nine countries in the sco iran is the one which has newly joined okay india pakistan russia china four central asian countries okay and uh, <coughs> iran has also recently joined now when we talk about the shanghai cooperation organization first of all the meet was postponed first of all the meet was postponed why because the prime minister has a meet has has to made a visit to usa and then that particular meet was even conducted into the virtual format now if we talk about the 2022 seo meet it was conducted in physical format the pandemic has receded but why 2023 meet has been conducted into the virtual format so many of the uh, political strategist commentators they are saying this particular thing that india is treating seo secondary now the reason that why it has uh, been held into the virtual format is this russia we uh, right now having a problematic relations because of their confrontations in the galwan valley lac pakistan because their support of the terrorism we also don't want to engage the pakistan if a physical meet would happen then the pakistan china would have visited india but we don't have good relations right now with them secondly even there is the russia ukraine war is going on and the sanctions have been imposed on the russia by the west and if we would have invited the russia then again it have it it would not have worked good for the optics it would not have worked good for the optics so this is something that has happened now basically guys the point that, uh, that now with respect to this virtual summit there are certain uh, dimensions that are being opened up in this particular article so basically so basically <clears throat> the question is that india is holding both sco and g20 the sco has been conducted online but the g20 is coming offline how india will explain this particular thing now the chinese analyst they are saying this particular thing that actually during the g20 india conducted a g20 tourism working group meeting and this g20 tourism working group meeting was conducted in jammu and kashmir but the chinese but the chinese delegation they refused that they will not come to the jnk why they will not come to jnk because guys china supports pakistan on the jammu and kashmir question so they did not want to offend pakistan they did not came and it has been said that as a response 
now india has converted the seo meet into the virtual format and india is also showing the combative attitude against the china for example the prime minister for example the prime minister had recently made a statement during the seo that some countries use cross border terrorism as an instrument of their policies they provide shelter to terrorists and seo should not hesitate to criticize such nations now this is a statement made against the pakistan secondly guys during the seo this 2023 the belt and road initiatives the 10th anniversary was being observed by the china now the prime minister said that connectivity projects should respect the national sovereignty now this comment was made against the china because china is helping the pakistan to build the china pakistan economic corridor which will pass from the illegally uh, illegally pakistan occupied kashmir okay so it will pass from there now the pakistan occupied kashmir is illegally occupied by pakistan it is rightfully the territory of india from there you are taking a project fine fine how you can do that particular thing you are impacting the sovereignty so india has always criticized the bri has criticized the cpc and against the china also we made this statement so it is being called as a combative attitude of india but actually this is not a combative attitude this is simply the national interest that we are trying to we are trying to preserve then <clears throat> seo declaration that has been signed was also silent on the ukraine war there was no mention of the ukraine war fine and the russian president has also even thanked the seo countries that they are the seo countries that they have supported the russia okay so these are all the things that have happened in the seo and in this particular capacity the seo meet was a mixed bag okay where much did not came okay so that is all about it <clears throat> then guys moving to the next article deciphering maharashtra's defection its politics okay now uh, basically guys i will not advise you to go too much in detail in this particular article the article is talking about a recent split that has happened in the ncp where the ajit pawar along with many of the legislators have joined the support to the bjp okay so the article is talking about that uh, basically uh, the era of congress dominance has weakened up okay and in 2014 it got ended but even the bjp is not able to get uh, bjp is not able to uh, consolidate the reins there okay and these particular kind of uh, issues are going on now uh, again guys for the examination no need to go too much in detail in this particular article so uh, i have given a crisp summary if you want to read if you have the interest in the political news you can but for upsc exam not important okay supreme court notice to maharashtra speaker in petition over disqualification proceeding now guys uh, we have discussed this particular article in lot more detail also when the supreme court judgment on the maharashtra issue came so basically guys you uh, let me tell you some of the basic background information first so basically guys we have seen this particular thing we have seen this particular thing that there was that shiv sena shiv sena which was the ruling party in the maharashtra some of the mlas under the leadership of eknath shinde some of the mlas under the leadership of the eknath shinde they rebelled against the shiv sena and these mlas around 47 mlas they joined the bjp okay initially they were 47 okay later words one or two more or less could also be there but that is not important they supported the bjp and shiv sena okay eknath shinde and eknath shinde plus bjp they made a new government in the maharashtra now basically guys what has happened what has happened as this particular thing happened supreme court <coughs> supreme court just few months back have given one particular judgment and in this particular judgment it was said that eknath shinde and these 46 other mlas including eknath shinde the 47 mlas what have happened they have during this particular supporting of the bjp they have defied the whip they have defied the whip of the shiv sena party they have defied the whip of the shiv sena party now whip is a disciplining officer in every political party 
the whip will tell the people which party they have to support where they have to vote where they have to vote positively where they have to vote negatively the political party is bound by the whip now what happened eknath shinde okay their mlas they did not voted against their own party okay when the uh, uh, basically what happened they supported the bjp in forming the majority government and therefore they have went against the whip of the shiv sena party now on this particular capacity these people could be disqualified but uh, the speaker is not taking any decision to disqualify these legislators now understand this particular thing initially what happened initially initially the eknath shinde they said that whose whip will prevail the whip of the legislative party will prevail and not the political party not the political party now what is the difference between the legislative party and what is the difference between a political party now shiv sena is a big party which have some mlas who are there in the house and apart from mlas there are many other people also who are not in the legislature but they are the members so see this is the shiv sena this is the shiv sena the entire party within this entire party there are some of the members of the shiv sena who are the mlas also who are the mlas also now the question comes that who will appoint the whip this party okay the whole party will appoint the whip or whether the mlas whether the mlas which are there in the house they will appoint the whip now when we talk about the eknath shinde see uh, in the 2019 maharashtra elections okay around 55 mlas okay one or two more or less could be there okay uh, around 55 mlas were up, uh, about 55 mlas from the shiv sena party won the election and out of 55 approximately 47 support eknath shinde had so point is that majority of the mlas support the eknath shinde have so they say that we will appoint our own whip fine and this is the legislative party whip this is the legislative party whip but the whole shiv sena party says that no we will appoint the whip and that is the political party whip so the political party whip said the eknath shinde and the mlas that don't support bjp and the eknath shinde they come with their own whip they said that we will support whose whip will be supreme so supreme court recently had said that the whip supreme court recently said that the whip of the political party will be supreme so it means that the shiv sena party which asked them not to vote that whip will be supreme but they still have went against that now we have the anti defection law we have the anti defection law anti defection law very clearly provides that if you go against your whip you could be disqualified and who will take the decision decision will be taken by the speaker decision will be taken by the speaker so now the speaker can disqualify the eknath shinde and some of these legislators but he is not taking a decision now the supreme court has asked the speaker that as per this kesham megh chandra singh judgment kesham megh chandra singh judgment the speaker has to take the decision within the 3 months within the 3 months so you should take decision within that particular period now all the eyes now all the eyes are on the position of the office of the speaker so that is all guys about it i hope that you have understood it okay uh, you are not required to go too much more in the detail than that because then there are also a lot of politicization that comes here okay that is all about and now taking up the main practice question india's lack of a credible explanation in hosting a virtual sco summit indicates new delhi's diplomatic drift as far as the sco is concerned comment as far as the sco is concerned comment so that is all guys about <clears throat> the main practice question for today so i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end to the today's session now we'll be meeting on monday till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much